Happy New Year, Scott. Are you wavering at all by virtue of what's going on this week? Uh, we're not wavering, but it's clearly not a good start to the year. I mean, uh, you know, markets almost got to an all-time high at the end of last year, and the first four trading days of this year have been really terrible. Um, I mean, I can see what the market's struggling with because, as your guest previously talked about, you know, part of it is when the Fed cuts, and I think people are still jumpy about a strong labor market and if inflation is softening. But our base case still remains that, you know, we, we're going to see all-time highs in January, and then I think the market is tough in the first half of this year because of some of those things, but we'll, we'll overall end up strong by the end of the year. But you're not, you're not rethinking your own outlook at all by, you know, how... I mean, you obviously sound somewhat concerned by the, the way this year has started. Maybe it didn't go according to your plan. So how's that all factoring into your psyche? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it is disappointing because, you know, the, the year tends to play out in, in January. So the fact that we're, you know, sort of had a failed Santa Claus rally in the first five days is pretty important. And the market looks like it's going to be negative. Just tells you that... Um, the fundamentals, might, which, which have been improving, aren't necessarily going to convince investors to be buying stocks. So I do think it's telling us it's going to be a, a tough year. But the reason I'm, we're not wavering is that the, the reasons we think 2024 will be a good year for stocks has to do with the fact that the PMIs are bottoming and inflation's falling like a rock and the Fed has pivoted and is now managing a business cycle. I mean, those are really good anchors and supports for why stocks can do well. But you know, it's not a great start. I mean, it'd be much better if we were up for the week. Yeah, well, I mean, bulls would feel better. What about this ISM services report? I mean, I know you talk about PMIs, but is that concerning to you? Well, it's, uh, there's, there's pluses and minuses. I mean, to me, um, I think the ISM services employment number and, you know, the manufacturing number show you that the labor report we got today may not be as strong as it looks. And I think that's actually good because, we don't want a labor market showing signs of rejuvenation. I think the trend there is, is sort of softer employment growth. And from a prices perspective, I think it's pretty supportive of what we've been seeing, which is, you know, prices are falling. And as long as housing and, and cars don't surge, um, you know, housing growing at 3% is fine. That's consistent with 2% inflation. I think inflation is going to eventually be viewed as, you know, approaching target. And that's actually good. So, uh, Scott, you know, the data isn't always in a straight line. I think it's a little messy this week, and I think it is disappointing to see. But I think too many are going to be quickly turning bearish and then put on their hard landing or skeptic hat or the Fed hawk hat. And I think that's going to prove to be a mistake. So you, you, you look for about 10 percent out of the S&P, but more or less is what you think we're going to do from, from here. Uh, how many cuts do you need to get that? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's not as dependent on cuts as it's dependent on really inflation approaching, you know, what we'd all accept as like, you know, close enough to 2% so that the Fed is no longer fighting inflation. So I, it's not going to be as important as cuts as really sort of the quality of, of the inflation data. And I think the second is that, you know, we do need to have a rebound in earnings and global growth, which I do think is underway. And, you know, as you know, inflation is normalizing outside the U.S. And when you have that combination of inflation sort of normalizing and real growth recovery, I mean, that's that's good for stocks. So it's not it's not dependent on the number of cuts.